Hello everyone. Today we'll be learning about luminosity and brightness. And so these are two terms that can be used to describe how bright stars are. Uh, and so in this we'll be learning about what we can tell uh, about stars simply by looking at how bright they seem to be. So let's start off by just the definition of terms. We'll start off with luminosity. Now the luminosity of a star, represented by a capital L, is a measure of how much energy uh, it comes out of it altogether. So it's the energy radiated in all directions by the star. So it's measured in joules per second, which is the amount of energy radiated every second. Uh, but because that's a bit of a mouthful, we can also measure it in watts. So one watt is the same as one joule per second. It's a very easy conversion. So our sun has a luminosity of this incredibly huge number of watts. It's 3.84 times 10 to the 26. If you were to write this down, there would be 27 digits in this number. It's a pretty big number. But of course, it's a star. You'd expect it to be bright. So the brightness or intensity of a star is represented by a capital I up here. And it's a measure of how much of its light reaches Earth. So you can see that, in fact, in this uh, little rectangle on this light coming out of the star uh, shows us what the brightness of the star is. We can see that when we get further away from the star, uh, this rectangle will be getting bigger. Uh, and so the amount of light in each rectangle of the same size gets smaller and the star gets dimmer. So it's measured in watts per square meter. So it's energy or power per area. And it, uh, it shows how bright the star appears to be from Earth. So it's got nothing, it's not really the same as the luminosity, because remember, luminosity is energy in all directions. Whereas brightness, or intensity, uh, is simply the amount of energy in a particular area. And you have to know the distance from the star to calculate that. So the light from a star spreads out in all directions. We can think of it as a radiating sphere of light. So you can see it's sort of going out forward, back, left, right, up, down. So you can imagine a sphere of radiation coming out from the star, as we can see in this picture. The intensity of the star decreases as the surface area of this sphere increases. We can see that if we take one meter square on the side of the sphere, we'll get less energy if we're a long way away and more energy if we're closer in, because the sphere will be smaller when we're closer in. So the surface of a sphere uh, of radius r is given by this equation, 4 pi r squared. I'm sure you've seen it before. So the intensity of a star is power per unit area. And so we can see from this term here that the area increases as the square of the radius. And because uh, the intensity is per unit area, we need to divide by this radius squared. So we have this equation here. Intensity is proportional to 1 over r squared. So we can see that if we have a distance at r and an intensity i, when we double that distance to 2r, when we draw the same square over here, we only get a quarter of the intensity because we're only getting a quarter of this square over here. So the intensity at that point is a quarter of i. Now at a distance from the star, the total power radiated will be L because that's the luminosity of the star and it will be spread over a sphere with, air, with surface area 4 pi r squared. So we've got L coming out of here in all directions, and at a radius uh, r, we have the surface area of the sphere being 4 pi r squared. So the intensity of such a star is given by this equation here. Intensity equals luminosity in the middle, divided by the surface area of the sphere. And so that will tell us how much power there is, how many watts from the star, uh, within a particular area. So we can see that if we took the intensity of all these different points all over the sphere and we added them all together, it would be the same as multiplying this by 4 pi r squared. And we would end up with the luminosity because that's the total power over the whole sphere. Now. The intrinsic brightness of a star, which is represented by I0, can be used to calculate a star's brightness at different distances. So the I0 is the intensity of a star, 
uh, when you're at a particular distance from it, it's fairly close. And so from there, uh, we can use the I, this is, this is sort of the luminosity of the star, the I0. So uh, if we know the intrinsic brightness, then we can find the apparent brightness by using uh, the apparent brightness intensity equals I0 over R squared. So we can see that it's still decreasing at the rate of uh, r squared. This sort of um, intrinsic brightness is uh, also measured as an ab absolute magnitude of the star. So you might hear that term used later on. Uh, and we can see that the i0 is a very, very nice thing to know. Because if we know the intrinsic brightness of a star, um, and we know the apparent brightness, and we can calculate how far away we are from it. Now the distance to a star is the biggest factor determining its brightness. If it's far away it will be dim, if it's close up it will be bright. So a very far away star might not be very bright even if it's very 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 luminous. On the other hand, uh, a very close star might be very bright even if it's not particularly luminous. So an example of this uh, bottom type of star is our sun. Our sun isn't a particularly luminous star in the grand scheme of things, but because it's so close to us, it appears much brighter than any other stars, so much so that it outshines all of them when it's daytime. Uh, on the other hand, a faraway star, uh, even if it's very luminous, is not very bright. So this uh, star at the bottom of the photograph here is uh, more luminous than almost the entire galaxy but it just appears as one of many, many stars in the sky because it's not very bright from where we're looking at it. So let's look at an example. Suppose we have two stars, A and B, boring names. They have equal luminosity. So they output the same amount of energy. So how much fainter is star A than star B? Uh, obviously, star B is fainter because it's further away. So if we look at the distances between the stars, we have 10 light years for A and 20 light years for B. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter whether we're measuring it in light years or parsecs or kilometers or whatever. The important thing is that B is twice as far away as A. So if we know that B is twice as far away as A, we can tell the relative intensity or the ratio of intensities between the two stars. Using this equation here, intensity is proportional to 1 on r squared, we can see that b is 1 on r squared, so that's 2 squared, it's a quarter, um, as bright as a. So we can say from that that uh, a is 4 times brighter than b. So that's called the inverse square law because we have uh, 1 over, so it's an inverse, and we have the square of the radius. Right, that's the end of the theory. So we've learned about uh, the inverse square law. We learned about the difference between brightness and luminosity and how to calculate one from the other. All right, let's go on to some questions. Question six. The total power output of a star is called its... That's right, its luminosity. So this is, uh, it's measured in watts or joules per second. It's the total amount of energy per unit time. All right, so the power output per area of a star at a certain distance is called its intensity. And of course, intensity is also called brightness, so that's uh, also a correct answer. Uh, it's very important not to get these two confused, because the luminosity of a star doesn't change depending on where you look at it from, but the intensity does. Question 7. Two stars are the same distance from Earth. If one star appears to be twice as bright as the other, then it must be half exactly twice or four times as luminous. Well, if we look at uh, the equation that tells us how bright a star is, the intensity equals the luminosity over the surface area of the sphere coming out of it. Remember? So, uh, if something's twice as bright, then that changes uh, then the distance doesn't change, then there's only one other thing that can change, and that's the luminosity. So let's look at our options. Is it half as luminous? If the star were less luminous, it would be less bright. 
So this obviously isn't the right answer. How about exactly is luminous? Now if L doesn't change here and R doesn't change, then R is not going to change either. So B can't be the right answer. How about D, four times as luminous? Now first this might sound right because we know that there's a square somewhere in the equation, but it's not the luminosity, it's in the distance. And as we know, the distance doesn't change. So it's not D. Our final option is C, twice as luminous. And we can see that if we double the luminosity, then we'll double the intensity as well. And so we find that C is the right answer. If you double the luminosity of a star, you double its brightness, as long as it's the same distance away. Question 8. The stars Pollux and Formelhut both have the same brightness, but Pollux is 1.4 times further away. How much more luminous is Pollux than Formelhut? Alright, well, let's write down an equation to describe them first of all, because uh, as physicists we love equations, as long as they're easy. So, uh, we have the intensity of Formelhut is uh, equal to its luminosity over 4 pi r squared. And we've put a little subscript f to show that it's from uh, Formelhut. So, um, if we know it's the same intensity as Pollux, then we can equate that uh, with the same equation but for Pollux. So we have the luminosity of Pollux, a little subscript p, over 4 pi and the distance from Pollux away. All right, so that's a start. Now we need to start putting in information from the question. So Pollux is 1.4 times further away than Formelhout. So that means that we can substitute this uh, rp with 1.4 rf. Make sense? And of course we can also get rid of these 4 pi's. If we get rid of the 4 pi's then it looks something like this. So once we've substituted in this 1.4 uh, r, we end up with this equation here. lf over rf squared equals lp over 1.4 rf squared. Now when we square a number that's in the brackets then we square everything inside it and so that gives us uh, 1.96 which is 1.4 squared times rf squared. And now we have the same denominator on both. We know that this isn't zero so it's possible to uh, cancel that out on both sides. And that gives us uh, the luminosity of Fummelhout equals the luminosity of Pollux over 1.96. And so we can say that Pollux is about 1.96 or twice uh, as luminous as Fummelhout. And so this lets us determine the uh, relative uh, luminosities of different stars simply by knowing their brightnesses and their distances. Question 9. A light bulb, oh, finally something back in real life, has a luminosity of 100 watts. What is its brightness at a distance of 15 meters? So in this case, uh, we're still using the same concepts as, uh, as we're using for stars, so brightness and luminosity, or intenseness, uh, intensity and luminosity. Um, so we can use the same equations. Intensity equals luminosity over 4 pi r squared. Now our distance, r, is 15 meters. And we know its luminosity is 100 watts. Uh, and of course, 4 and pi, we know the values of. So we substitute those in, and it looks something like this. 100 over 4 pi, 15 squared. So we can throw that equation into a calculator, or we can simplify it a bit first. And either way, you end up with uh, 100 over 900 pi, or 1 over 9 pi. So this equals about 0 0.035 watts per meter squared. Obviously, it's not quite that, because you're dividing by pi. You'll get an infinitely repeating thing. But if we're answering to two significant figures, then this is our answer. You can see it's not a very high amount of watts per meter. But for a star, the luminosity tends to be a little more than just 100 watts. Question 10. Why is it that our sun appears so much brighter than any other star in the sky? Well, the greatest factor 
uh, in brightness is not the luminosity of something, but the distance away from it. So the sun is not especially luminous. It's not much more luminous than uh, a lot of other stars in the sky. However, it's much closer to us than any other star. I mean, we're in the same solar system as it. That's about as close as you can get in astronomical terms. So the brightness of a star depends on both the star's luminosity and the distance to it. So we can see there's luminosity on the top and the distance to it on the bottom. And for our sun, that distance is very, very small. So the intensity will be very, very large. So we can see that the sun's brightness is greater than that of any other star uh, because of the sort of the distance between us and it. Other stars are certainly far more luminous than the sun, but we don't care about them because the sun's the closest. All right, that's the end of the lesson. So in this section, we've learned about how we can tell different things about stars by looking at its color and its brightness and intensity. So the brightness and intensity and luminosity of a star uh, are all related. Well, intensity and brightness are the same thing. And we can calculate one from the other uh, if we know the distance from us to the star.